Synth EBD can randomize NPC head parts, but this functionality comes with some caveats. At the end of this video, I'll show you a gameplay recording demonstrating what I mean. Synth EBD uses the same function as the original EBD mod to distribute head parts. And from my testing, the same caveats apply to the original EBD head part distribution. I'll show in just a bit what those caveats are, and I welcome feedback from more experienced modders if they know of a workaround for the issue I will show. First, I'll show you how to set up head part distribution in Synth EBD. When you go into the head parts menu, you'll start at the import page. Here we can select a mod to import head parts from. I've installed KS hairdos through my mod manager, and when I select it, you can see the hair list populates with the hair from that mod. On the top, there are a bunch of filters that you can toggle to select which head parts you want to import from the selected mod. For example, if you only want to import female head parts, you can uncheck import male head parts, and you will see the list gets updated in response. If you are check that option, the male hairs get added back. By default, Synth EBD will only import head parts marked as playable, but you can uncheck this if you want to import both playable and non-playable head parts. My understanding is that playable head parts are the ones available in the character creation menu. There's an option that's unchecked by default to import extra parts as separate head parts. These have the extra part flag in SSE edit and are usually things like hairline meshes. I don't think you would normally want this enabled, but the option is there if you need it. If you have a mod that has multiple types of head parts, you can use the individual checkboxes to select which types of head parts you want to import. For example, if I uncheck import hair, no hairs will be available to import. You can also go through the list and use the X button in the top right corner to remove specific head parts that you don't want to import. Once you're happy with your selections, you can click the green import button at the bottom of the window. The status log will tell you that it has successfully imported head parts. If you try to import the same head parts again, it will tell you that they've already been imported and it won't import them again. At the top, each type of head part has its own menu, all of which behave the same way. In this case, let's go to hair. On the left, we have a list of our imported hairs. You can toggle their visibility by gender. You can use the purple AZ button to sort them alphabetically if you'd like. At the top, there are common distribution rules. If you've watched the previous videos, you should have a good sense of how these work. These are going to apply for the distribution of all head parts of this type. Hairs, in this case. If an NPC doesn't match the rules you set, they can't get hair assigned. The only difference is the distribution probability. This will be the probability that an NPC gets its hair randomized. By default, it'll be set to 50, so there will be a 50-50 chance that an NPC will keep its original hair, or get a random one assigned. For each head part in the list, you can select it and modify its specific distribution rules. These again work the same way as you've seen before and the distribution probability weighting works the same way as it does for texture subgroups or body slides. It's not the percent chance, but rather the number of virtual raffle tickets that head part has, which governs its chance of being picked. One thing to note is that you can see this hair got imported with its allowed races already filled out. This is because when we imported it, we had the respect race form lists option enabled. Head parts can have a valid races property. I believe this dictates which races it's available for during character creation. If the Respect Race Form Lists option is selected, these races will be imported and converted into allowed races rules for distribution. There is a menu with some additional settings at the top right. In the previous video on textures and meshes, I mentioned that config files assign textures to head parts, which results in the NPC receiving that modified object as a new head part. This menu determines for each type of head part who should win if both the config file distributor and the head part distributor want to distribute a head part to a given NPC. By default, the config files always win, but if you want, you can change it so that the head part distributor wins instead. Next, there's a verbose script toggle, which will give a notification in the top left corner and write to your papyrus log when a head part gets assigned. As usual, 
This is for testing, and you probably don't want it enabled for normal play. Let's have an example. I'll pick the Karen hairstyle and use the specific NPC assignments menu to make Hulda use that hair. Now I'll run the patcher to give hold of that hair, and load up the game to show you the issue with head parts in Synth EBD. What the issue boils down to is that NPCs with custom face sculpts, which ends up being a lot of custom appearance NPCs, get their face screwed up. When you first encounter them, they look fine, but if you exit their location and then re-enter it, you'll find that their face has been regenerated from the data in their ESP file, discarding the custom sculpt. If you enable head part distribution, I highly recommend that you go into the block list and block any custom appearance NPCs that you have from receiving hair and some other head part types. From my testing, scars seem to be okay and don't trigger this issue, but hairs do cause this problem. As mentioned in the video about the general settings menu, there is a checkbox which tries to filter out custom appearance NPCs automatically, but the filter is far from foolproof so I recommend doing this manually in the block list instead. Another solution that might work is to go into the general head part distribution settings for these head parts and disable distribution to unique NPCs. Now let's go into the game and see it in action. When we first spawn into the game, we'll take a look at Hulda. We'll see that she still has her face set by the Bijan NPCs mod, but now she has the new hairstyle we assigned to her. Now I'll exit the bannered mare and then return. As you can see, Holda no longer has the custom face sculpt set by Bijan. The other NPCs seem to still have their correct faces, aside from Uthgird sitting in the back, who is another Bijan NPC with a custom face. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I see the same issue with the original EBD mod, and I haven't been able to find a solution yet. If anyone has ideas for a fix, I'm all ears. In the meantime, block custom NPCs from receiving problematic head parts using one of the methods I described. That's it for head part distribution. See you in the next video.